Hi guys, so before I give you my December wrap up at long last, I decided that the last book that I read in 2019 deserved a video of its own. It went straight on my favorite books of all time list, but I don't think it is on the radar of a whole lot of people, so I decided to give it some special screen time. It is by a very famous author though, by Anthony Burgess, author of A Clockwork Orange. And it is the last book of his that was published before he died in 1993. It is A Dead Man in Deadford. This is the story, or rather a story, of Elizabethan poet and playwright Christopher Marlowe, a contemporary of Shakespeare's, who was born in the same year as Shakespeare and died in 1593. So exactly 400 years before Anthony Burgess died, so that's pretty neat, I guess. I came across this by total chance at the beginning of December and immediately went and ordered a copy because the blurb says that it is a clever, sexually explicit, fast-moving, full-blooded yarn. So check, 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 check. And I wasn't wrong, only perhaps in the sense that I had even underestimated just how good it is. I said that this was the story of Marlowe's life, but it's really only the story of the last couple of years in his life and of the events leading up to his death. He was stabbed to death in Deptford, which is now part of London, it's west of Greenwich, and he was only 29 years old when he died. His killing was likely connected to the spy work that he did for the crown and possibly also to his connection with the so-called school of night the circle of friends and thinkers around sir walter Raleigh, who were known atheists and therefore traitors to the crown in his version of the events burgess describes how marlow was recruited and why he joined the intelligence network how he was impatient with his studies of theology in Cambridge and wanted really only to be a poet, but of course there was the need for money. But what he then witnesses of politics and political intrigue and the ruthlessness of power politics in the service makes him despair with crown and church alike, which of course is the same thing anyway, and ultimately with God himself. But it's not just all of that which earns him quite a few enemies in the course of time, but it's also his uncompromising personality and his self-confidence and how he always inadvertently draws attention to himself with it. And also how he doesn't just put up with insults and verbal abuse directed at him, no matter who directs it at him. Christopher Marlowe is and has always been a half-mythical figure. There is not a lot known about his life and his person that we can with any confidence call a fact. He was such an infamous and somewhat scandalous half-celebrity, so there were rumors galore about him, not necessarily of the malicious kind, but also just gossip. And you never know what true, what is embellished truth, what is just misunderstandings, also modern misunderstandings based on autobiographical readings of his texts, and what were just blatant lies spread by his enemies to discredit him. Burgess is of course very well aware of that problem and he tells the story through the eyes of a contemporary narrator, a theatre acquaintance of Marlowe's who actually witnesses very few of the events that he describes and who embellishes a lot and provides scenes and dialogues that are likely to have occurred based on what he knows about the persons involved. And Burgess has him talk openly about this modus operandi a couple of times in the book. So there is always this awareness and the reader is always aware that the story is a construct even by its inner logic. The author never lets us forget it. And another means by which he reminds us constantly is that he always reminds us that we don't even know the exact or official names of the people because they have come down to us in different forms because orthography wasn't fixed at the time and also pronunciation was shifting. So whenever a character introduces himself to another character in the book, he will always provide the whole palette of alternatives for his name. So for instance, when our protagonist introduces himself, he would say, for instance, Christopher. The other name is unsure. Marlin, Merlin, Marley, Morley, Marlowe will do. It might sound annoying, but 
it happens just rarely enough that it stays hilarious right until the end. And I just appreciated this nod to the evidence a lot. And another thing that I appreciated is the way that homosexuality was treated in this book, which was written by a straight male author, as far as I know, who died in 1993. So. Marlowe's sexuality is, of course, a matter of speculation as much as everything else about him, but in this version of events he was exclusively gay. And of course I knew that sexuality was going to be a thing in this book. Um, I mean, poet, lover and spy, the blurb says. But I didn't expect it to be a thing that was treated with such earnestness. It was never anything salacious that was there, mainly for the gratification of readers with a taste for scandal and truthiness. Um, there are several sex scenes, but they are never that explicit. And in the most explicit of them, the most explicit words are actually in Latin. So it's perfectly safe to read on public transport. <laughs> and it's quite cute as well. But most importantly, Marlowe's sexuality in this book is integral to the development and change in his spirituality. And there is also a romance that provides the emotional through line for the book and earns the protagonist quite a few sympathy points and also makes him feel real and vivid as a character. But the single most striking characteristic of the book is without a doubt its style. It pretends to be the work of an Elizabethan writer and it is decidedly not historiography, it is a fictional text even if it, in its inner logic. So it is essentially an Elizabethan prose novel. Of course, there is no such thing as an Elizabethan prose novel, so how that might have looked is anyone's guess. So Burgess had to create his very own style for this book, based on Elizabethan poetry and the plays of Shakespeare and, of course, Marlowe himself, but toned down very much, A, because it is, in fact, prose and not poetry, and B, because it has to be palatable for a modern audience. It is meant to be entertaining rather than educational or just intellectually stimulating. It is very clearly meant to be fun and although there are a lot of dark scenes and a lot of dark topics throughout the book, it, its tone is very much tongue-in-cheek the whole time. It is rather tricky to read though, mostly because of the way that dialogue is handled. And you have to give it all of your attention, otherwise you will be lost immediately. But that is, of course, also what makes this book so great and such a treat to read. It is for sure one of the cleverest books that I have ever read. And it is also such fun. I was grinning throughout while reading it because I was just so appreciative of what it was doing and how clever it was. And if a play with language such as that sounds at all interesting to you, I can only urge you to pick it up and try and see how you get along with it. It was a reading experience that I will remember for a long time. However, there were a couple other books that I read in December and liked a lot, and I will tell you all about them in my next video. Thank you for watching. Bye!